Okay, so we are back. It is our 15th class meeting. That is, it is week 8 and our first session for EPA 3. Heng Jong Yong 3. Oh, interesting. I got a typo in here. Let's fix that. I wonder how long that mistake has been showing up in my PowerPoints. Hmm. Okay. VBA 3. And tonight we are going to do a review of the semester so far. Because we have gone as far in the textbook as we need to for the midterms. So, take a look. Coming up. This week, Thursday, May 7th, is a Zoom session. Thursday Zoom is at 10.30, oh my gosh, a.m. And we will be doing the discussion kind of activities, the partner activities on page 17 and page 23 in the book. And we will have some Q&A time. You can ask me pretty much anything. The following week is week 9. And in week 9, we will have our one-to-one -one interview test. And for that, you've got to check the timetable, and we're going to take a jump over there in just a moment. And we will have a recorded lecture. Now, I know, usually in our department, in the midterms week, we skip one class. That's not the school rule. That's the practice, okay, not the policy, but the practice in our department. However, because this is a distance semester, everything we do is easier for the government and school officials to check. And if we are coming up short, then they're going to complain and we'll have to do a makeup class or something. So here's the deal. I recorded a lecture about two years ago for an absent class, for a, a bogong, an online bogong. And I'm going to recycle that. I think the lecture was used for EPA3. Not quite sure, but I believe so. And it runs about an hour, 65 minutes. That information will not be on your midterm, but it could be on your final. And in that recorded lecture, I speak rather slowly. But I do not provide translation. So after you've watched it one time, if you have questions, you can watch it again, you can do some translation, uh, and we will talk about it in a class following. In the recorded lecture, it mentions <coughs> a quiz, because for that video, at that time in our school history, we needed some kind of proof that students watch the video. I don't remember if we were able to use the video projection system in the CTL or not. But anyway, so there was a quiz. Uh, I think it was four questions. I have it in my office computer. I'm at home tonight. But anyway, uh, it mentions a quiz. I don't plan to do the quiz unless when we are having a live chat and I talk a little bit about that and nobody knows what I'm talking about, well, then everything could change. Right? There's uh, three main themes there, taxes and fees, of course. The third theme is excises, E-X-C-I-S-E-S, -E -E which I'm not even sure Korea translates. In fact, uh, we often talk about excise taxes in California. So the lines are pretty blurry. Um, where an excise is a tax, where an excise is a fee. Uh, we'll talk about that in the recording. 
but I'm not going to give you a hard time on excises. But taxes and fees, you definitely should know the difference. It's a key thing in government revenues. And if you've taken a public finance class, you should know these two words. And if you haven't, well, I'm going to teach them to you. Fine. That's midterms week next week. Not this week for this recording and a Zoom, but the next week, starting May 11th. You're welcome to watch that video after you've taken a test, after you've finished all your tests. Watch it in the weekend. Watch it the next week. Remember, in this school system, you have two weeks to complete a video to get your attendance checked. <clears throat> so I'm doing a review tonight. I am not giving you typed notes. You're supposed to be taking notes. What I will do, and this is very kind. I have never done this before. But again, usually... I don't even make PowerPoints or just a couple, a few. Usually I just have some images that I put up and I do most of my work on the chalkboard. But this semester, I'm going to give you this PowerPoint. This PowerPoint file is all of the PowerPoint images that I have used in the recorded lectures and in the Zoom lectures. Okay. But not everything that I have shown you is in the PowerPoint. Not everything that we've done in class is on the CTL. In the subjario, um, the, the, the postings. Because you're supposed to be taking notes. I will give you a hint. One of the things we talked about was... Uh, three R's I think there's a couple things we've had in videos where I showed a picture it's not in the PowerPoint and it's not uploaded on the CTL so you're responsible for collecting that information and I can review things but I'm not giving everything to you PowerPoint is online and that's already a major gift from me Remember, your boss is probably not going to give you PowerPoint handouts. You need to know that after our discussion Thursday, I will not answer any questions about the test or anything I taught. That's what the Zoom lesson, Zoom session is for on Thursday. If you have a question, ask it during the Zoom session. In the Zoom session, again, we're going to do two pages in the book, and it's going to be open question and answer. I will not tell you what is on the test. I will only tell you the things we have studied that you should know, because it might be on the test. Okay, now I've got one more slide available here. If when we're doing this, I decide I need to add something, uh, I always keep these live. You know, you always see me edit them because things become messy. I make mistakes. So far, we're all good. I'm going to uh, pop back for a second to remind you that our last reading talked about fast tracking, and I gave you a quite long discussion about fast tracking. That's just an example of the kind of thing that you should know. You should be ready to test. Right? What is fast tracking? Can you describe it? Can you compare it? Now, you don't really need to know the difference between A and B, but it would be good to be able to say something like flatlined. Because if you take a look at it, actually this fast tracker kind of sort of flatlined. I mean, not exactly flat, but kind of, you know, stopped making progress. He reached a point where he stopped making progress. All right. 
I've not made any progress yet as of the time I'm recording now. I've not made any progress yet on your assignments. It's Sunday night. I've got Monday and Tuesday to do that. Tuesday's a holiday. So that on Thursday when we have our Zoom session, everything that I'm going to do should have been done and you can ask questions during the Zoom. And of course, anytime you can send me a cacao or an email or a text message, uh, you can send me a text message and ask if it's okay to phone. You can send me a cacao and ask if it's okay for cacao voice or video to ask questions about assignments. Okay. Assignments different from test. I'm not going to answer any questions about the test after Thursday, but you can always ask about the assignment. Alright, so let's just shrink this and get into the board here so we can take a look at a few things. Um, ka, my, my, I've lost my words. Timetable. I want to remind you that the Zoom for your one-to-one -one interview is different from our regular class Zoom. Okay? All three of my undergraduate classes, EPA one day, EPA one night, and EPA three, are all using the same personal room for exams. And there is a link with a password for the exam. It's just like the other Zooms, except that when you enter, you will get that please wait notice. Remember we showed before, please wait until the professor lets you in. And we have our timetable. Now my uh, discomfort, my discomfort, my lack of comfort is the fact that a number of people who are EPA 3 students did not put a 3 next to their name. They put a D, I guess. Uh, I haven't studied every name, but we have 15 students in EPA 3, and I don't have 15 threes up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got ten names up here with a three. If you are EPA 3, please, please put a 3 next to your name because when we start the test, I have to give you the right test. If I give you an EPA 1 test, theoretically it's easier, but we talked about things in EPA 1 that we haven't talked about in EPA 3 and you won't know what the heck I'm talking about. Unless you can remember taking EPA 1 last year or something, maybe. So it will help me if your right person puts a three after their name. All right. We're done with that. Let's go back to here a little bit. So that's the midterms. I don't think there's anything else up in the top part that we need to worry about. There's the recording. Now, of course, there will be a recording here in week eight. Actually, it's going to show up in week 7 or week 8. This recording I'm doing right now, but it's not there yet because I haven't uploaded it, because I haven't recorded it yet. I'm recording it now. Alright, so we have assignments, which I don't need to worry about here, but I want to remind you that you should put a copy of your assignment in your notebook. Because you can use your notebook, and you can use your book during the test. But if I ask you a question, oh, 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 I did the homework. Well, that doesn't help you in the test. So I suggest you put a copy of your assignments in your notebook. So you have it right at hand during the test. You can look in your notebook. You can look in your book. The problem with using your notebook and your book is that it is a timed test. For EPA 3, I'm not quite decided yet, but I believe your test will be about 11 minutes. So if I have 12 questions, I don't know how many questions, 
If I have 12 questions and you only finish 7 because you're going so slowly, because you're looking up all your answers, well, then time is over and you missed 5 questions. So it's really important that you study, you prepare, that you're ready to talk about most things and it's only maybe one or two questions that you are surprised or you want to get the fact exactly right and you want to look it up. Alright? I feel like in general you should be able to answer a question in 30 seconds. From the time I start asking a question to the time you finish it, less than one minute. Less than one minute. Okay. So what I'm going to do tonight is a review of the semester. And to do that, I'm going to go into the Haksab Jaryo Show all the way to the beginning. And to do that nicely, it's easier if I make myself a little smaller, a little less important, and move this that way, and then I can move myself up a little bit. Again, and go all the way down to the first posting. Welcome to class. Okay, there's nothing testable there. Second item is self-introductions. We've talked about this. We've done this in EPA 1. Many of my EPA 2 classes did this. I'm expecting a beautiful, perfect, no thinking, automatically out of your mouth self-introduction. Right? This should take less than 15 seconds. I say, please introduce yourself. Or I say, as here, Hi, my name is Robert Dickey. Please introduce yourself. Right? Or, Hi, I'm Robert Dickey. Please call me Rob. I'm a professor of public administration at Gaming University. That's my business introduction. If I say introduce your, if I say you're a student, please introduce yourself. Then you're going to introduce yourself in the student style, right? I'm a third year student of public administration at Gaiman University in Daegu, right? First with my name. Hi, my name is Kim Jung Min. My family name is Kim. You don't need to say spell that K I M. Everybody knows. If you have a less common Korean name, or you spell your name a different way, you need to spell it. Then you say, uh, please call me Jong Min, please call me Johnny, whatever, right? Just like we gave you the example. Some introduction. Next, talk about the book. Don't worry about it. Next, you should have a business card with your homework. If I say, show me your business card, I want you to pull it out from your notebook or paper or whatever. Show me in the camera. That will help me to know what kind of question to ask you. So your business self-introduction, hi, I'm James Kim with ABC Company, should match your name card. Here's my card. Now you won't be able to just hand me your card. It might be glued in your notebook, but you can show me. Right? So I understand. I know that you understand what we're doing here. Um, then, key learning points, don't worry about that. Then we talked about uh, listening, we talked about musical math. If I say, tell me about musical math, you can. Musical math, that's the idea that studying a foreign language is like studying music. Every day that you don't practice, you fall behind, you go backwards. For example, if there's seven days in a week and you practice four days, that means three days you didn't practice, you're going backwards. Four plus three minus equals only one. In one week, you only progress to like one day. That's musical math. Easy. Studying English in public administration. We've talked about this. There is a Bix and Kalp image, right? Two circles and they come together. There is this idea of uh, language and content coming together. Oh, I'm, excuse me, let me rephrase it. I made a, I spoke incorrectly. Wrong order. Language and content is the kind of the two circles. One class, one class, and they come together partly, overlapping. Bix and Kalp is the idea of basic interpersonal communicative skills and uh, 
cognitive academic language processing, BX and CALP, and they kind of fit together, but they overlap a little bit, and it's a question of how advanced is your language, how advanced is the content that you can do in this BX and CALPs in the picture, right? And then the language hard, the idea is that we all have our balancing zone of how we can use more content and, and, and use a little bit less language demand because we have this cognitive load and things can be too easy, too difficult. Those pictures are there. You can do that. I'm talking fast. It's a review. It's not the first time I've taught this. You've all heard this before. Okay, we're going down because we need to go to the second page in the CTO. Then I mentioned that if you have your name card, your name card speaks for yourself. It's really short, right? Listening log, fine, fine. Last name first, if you're interested, don't care. Zoom user's guide, don't need to worry about that. Week three, we talked about a recording, introducing everything. That's all technology for the class. I don't test on that. I did talk about customer, client, and citizen, and how these things are defined differently. How in some city halls, they try to push their professional staff to think about citizens as customers, you know, the customer is king, customer is first. Not, I am Gong Muan and you're a client. So what's the, what's the key word for client? The key word for client is uh, needy or dependent, that the, the, the master has all the power and the client can't really jump around because there's a dependency. Uh, the, in a client relationship, there's a professional or an expert and you can't just jump around. I need to stay with one. That's all part of a discussion. Uh, there's a picture in there. Professional relationship is a keyword. Dependency. All right. We talked a little bit about prepositions of time. There's a chart here. There's a PDF attached. You know, I have a funny feeling that because I do some things in both classes. So uh, we talked about uh, power breakfasts. Now we're going to jump into the book in just a second because we're already into the book. And then I checked listening logs and notebooks. And that's all we have in the CTL. So let's open up the book. I've got the book here. I'm going to enlarge this picture so that you can see more of the book. All right. So I'm opening up my book, and I believe the first page is page two. But before I go to page two, I want to open up to the back and remind you that in the back there is this kind of notebook, this phrase book. Anything that's in the phrase book through the first four chapters, you should know it. Remember that I'm listening for uh, more challenging English, not just simple English, not middle school English. I'm looking for language that shows that you're learning something in university, learning something in my class. And if you've lost that phrase book, because I suggest you carry it around with you to help study, you'll also find that the phrases and stuff are in the back of the book, like here. So it's summary language for the different chapters, which has everything that's in that book. And then at the back of that, there is also a general glossary. Uh, where do you see that? A glossary. Uh, and it would be good for you to know those words and be able to answer them. For example, the word, the, the phrase dress code is in the book, in this glossary. And it says, rules about the type of clothes employees should wear at a particular company. And that's a very narrow definition in the context of this book, but I gave you a broader idea of dress code as being what is expected to wear, what are kind of the rules for wearing, not only in a company, but for example, at a party. We talked a little bit about formal, semi-formal. Let's go back into the book. So page two has an article about Plantronics Oops, and I said, don't worry about the companies in the book. I'm not going to test you on Flantronics. That is a very long introduction for a company, and I'm asking for you for short 15-second introduction. 
Uh, it had words like manufacture, supply, provide services. You want to be able to describe your company. And again, I don't think I've checked your company descriptions very closely. We can, uh, I, I promise to get to stuff not later than Tuesday night, so it gives you time to look at it and think about it. And if you want, send me a cacao or an email with your revised company introduction text and I will look at it and I'll give you input. Okay? Uh, we talked a little bit about Gongmuan. Gongmuan means public servant. It doesn't mean public official or public officer. Those are not very good translations. Although we often hear people saying I'm a public officer. Uh, you're a police officer or you're a military officer, but uh, a public official sounds like somebody who has been uh, elected or is in the very highest rank, uh, generally, generally we talk about public servant, which is, as I've said before, kind of the Obama mind, like I'm here to help you, I work for you, customer is king, all right? So page uh, three talks about things like, uh, what does your company do? And you're able to describe it. Uh, if you work at the uh, Dalfa Kuchang, you'd say, we provide local public services, or we provide local government services to residents in the Dalfa district in Daegu, South Korea. Something like that. Uh, page four was another company introduction. And again, don't memorize the company, but there were some words we talked about here. In addition to customer client, I mentioned the word uh, you know, we have 87 accounts. An account could be translated as geijua, geijua, uh, like you you have a bank account. Um, but more than just financial, an account includes the history, the general information about a particular customer. One company, for example, I own ABC Mundungo. Uh, Excuse me, Mungujo, stationery shop. And so, Gameyong Day Central Office, Central Administration has an account with us, but so does Hengjin uh, Hakwa, so does Jungji uh, Wegyo Hakwa. And each organization maybe has their own contact person and they call us and say what they want. Maybe sometimes we call them and say, well, we haven't heard from you in a while. Don't you need more photocopy paper? Um, we have a deal on photocopy paper this week. If you order four or if you order more than four cases, we'll give you a ten percent discount. Something like that. Da, 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 da. So it contains enough information that the company can contact you, and we have a history of everything you've ordered. So Game Young Day might have 150 accounts, all the different hakwa plus the uh, day hak would have a different account, plus the Central University Administration would have an account. Maybe there are some other accounts. All right, so that's the idea of having an account. And then we also talked about um, oh, excuse me, all right, I've got that. So that's everything related to customer, client. Uh, I threw the word patient in there because patient kind of is in the middle, depends on what kind of a patient. Uh, and citizen is another thing where people can disagree whether they're more like a customer, more like a client. All right, page five was a discussion. It's more companies, NTT, Hanjin, Unibanco. Don't care about the details of the companies. Think about what it is you're trying to talk about, what the assignment was. And page six was the dress code. We talked about uh, dress codes in terms of what US banks do on Friday, maybe. Remember the phrase? Dress down Fridays as a relaxed dress code but only one day a week and maybe that relaxed dress code only allows for a certain kind of relax for example sports teams maybe only local sports teams so if you work at Daegu Bank don't wear a Lotte Giants t-shirt that would be terrible I live in Miriam, that's Kyung Sang Alright. Um, 
be able to talk about dress codes, uh, formal, semi-formal, casual. Page seven had the useful language at the bottom, the green box. We are recognized as a as a world leader in blah blah blah. Page eight, more of this idea of being able to have a conversation. It says to make small talk. Have a conversation, not just answer questions. Okay, even in EPA one, the students who are going to get an A in EPA 1 are the students who are able to do more than just answer a question. Right? You've got to be able to make a conversation. EPA 3, the standard is a little bit higher. I'm looking for you to be able to maintain a conversation, even start a conversation. And so page 8 is about starting a conversation, making small talk, not important stuff, not stressful stuff, just friendly stuff. I've been to a Daegu FC game. I'd love to go to some more. Had a good time there. I've been to one or two Samsung Lion games. Two. One in the old stadium. Two in the old stadium. And one in the new stadium. I've been to three Samsung Lion games. And I think that's the same number of Lotte Giants I've been to. Maybe two, maybe three. I don't remember. I haven't been to a Lotte Giants game in quite a long time. But... Anyway, uh, do you like sports? Um, and the lower part of page 8 has tag questions. I would love for you to ask me a tag question as part of a conversation during the test. In the test, I have questions I'm going to ask you or problems I'm going to give you where I want you to give me information. I want you to respond. That doesn't mean you only answer my question. Extend it. Talk more. Then I'll come up to a point where I'll say, okay, stop. I need to ask the next question. That doesn't mean you did bad. It only means we have so much time and I need to ask more questions. Okay, so don't feel bad if I say, okay, great, thanks. I need to go to the next question. If you're talking a lot, that's a good thing. Please remember in the test, I give points. I don't take away points. I give points. The more you do, the more chance you have of getting more points. Page 9, pretty easy. Talking about small talk. Page 10 is pretty much more of the same. It's small talk. There's nothing really important here. Page 11, small talk. But there are some useful conversation strategies on the bottom of page 11. There's a purple box. There's my star, pretty sloppy star, that says, I'd love to hear this kind of thing. So in the test, I might just say, we're walking to a meeting. I don't know you, you don't know me. Start a conversation. Mm. Oh, that's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. But if you're going to be successful in business, if you're going to be successful in any organization, you have to be able to help other people feel good. Oh, but professor, it's in English, and English is difficult. Yeah, that's the point. If you can only answer questions, you're not doing the job. Page 12 is another reading, and I love to test on the readings, and it is the art of the business lunch. And it has some key ideas. For example, who should pay for the meal? Who should be first? What should you do if somebody's late? What should you do while you wait? What is the process of the business and the meal? All those things are in the reading. Also, we talked about power breakfast, three martini lunch, etc., etc. And that's what was power breakfast right there, right? In the same way, on page 13 on the bottom, there is a listening. The key point for the listening was how do we hear numbers and how do we say numbers. And I talk about onesies and twosies. Onesie means reading numbers one by one by one by one. Twosies means 
Oh, my lamp is dying. Twosies means reading the numbers in twos. For example, the phone number I give is 4, 23, 51, 38 is 4, 2, 3, 5, 1, 3, 8. So onesies, 4, 2, 3, 5, 1, 3, 8. Seven numbers said one by one. And twosies means saying numbers in twos when I can. But if there's three, the first is one, the next two are two. So 4, 23, 51, 38. Or sometimes people mix and match, like 4, 2, 3, 51, 38. All right, so reading numbers, hearing numbers, saying numbers. Page 14 is the beginning of Unit 3. And the objective is to schedule a business meeting. We didn't practice this enough, but it is on the test. Okay, you did have an opportunity in the Zoom discussion. Okay. We didn't really practice the dialogue on page 15, but you want to think about it. You're responsible for it. Okay. If I say, let's set up a meeting, I might give you a timetable, or I might not. But I don't want to agree for a meeting time in the first or second. Show me that you have got some language skills. Show me that you can say no but still working for yes. Okay. No, I can't do it. I'm sorry I can't make it. That's a little difficult for me. All right. Is it convenient for you? So that's pages 14 and 15, trying to set up a meeting. Uh, as part of that process, we need to talk about times. And so we have... Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yeah, the times. How to tell time. So it's 8.45, that means it is a quarter to 9, that is 15 till 9, 15 of 9, 15 to 9, I don't like that one very much, 15 to 9 sounds like just numbers, and a quarter to 9 is okay. Alright, so being able to tell time, uh, page 16 is basically listening, page 17 is the we didn't do it in class. I've got a big X on my page, but I did mention that there is a conversation strategies in the purple box at the bottom of the page, which can be useful. Nice skill to have. I'd like to. I'd love to. That'd be very nice. That takes us to page 18, the third reading, which is it's time to try video conferencing. Remember I said that this is quite old. Uh, video conferencing is much more beyond that. But Zoom is, in fact, video conferencing. So, uh, what are some advantages and disadvantages of video conferencing? Hey, you can use some of your real life. You can talk about things you like and don't like about Zoom or about Cacao Talk or whatever. I also mentioned Commuter Cup. Well, in the Young Public Servant for a Day reading, we talked about commute briefly. Um, and in fact, in our self-introductions, we talked about commute. Well, commuter cup is the idea that uh, you have this kind of cup for travel, not just a mug like this one. Thank you. But a cup which is ideally no tip, doesn't tip over, no slip, it doesn't slide around, and no spill. If it does tip over, the liquid doesn't come out. Now, a tumbler is often no spill. Right, you can close it and it doesn't leak. But tumblers are often very tall with a small bottom. They're easy to tip over. So if you want a tumbler to be a commuter cup, it needs to have some kind of a stand or a rack or something that you can put in, like on an airplane or train. Right? No slip, no tip, no spill. All right, so that's talking about video conferencing. Um, and... Part of this in the Young Public Servant for a Day, we talked about the idea of metropolitan, which feels like big city. So we don't want to confuse that with the Daegu Gwangyeokshi, which I usually translate as Daegu Metropolitan City, which is an area. But metropolitan more feels like a place that's up and down. And then we can talk about greater Daegu, which is all the areas that feel like Daegu. And we talked about the 
100 kilometer rule, the, you can watch TV or radio, or the 100 mile rule, 100 miles is about 160 kilometers, but it's the idea that people feel like they're part of that city. So somebody from Yongchun, when they go to Seoul, and somebody says, where are you from? They might say, oh, I'm from Daegu. Even though they live in Yongchun, which is on the other side of Kyongsan and a little bit far from Daegu, but they watch Daegu TV. Maybe they come to Daegu every weekend to watch movies. Maybe they come to Daegu every week to go to school or to go to work. So they feel like they're part of this this greater Daegu, right? All right. Um, so we, we talked about words like urban, meaning inside the city, suburban, which is a bedroom community, an area next to the city that people are dependent on the city. A lot of people go to work to in, in the city, but other people stay in the suburban area. They own shops and businesses where these families, where the, the, somebody in the family works in the city, but they buy their Paris baguette and their gasoline and their home plus and all is in the suburban area. Like uh, maybe the Kyungsan E-Mart is not really in the middle of the city, right? Kind of on the edge. All right. And there's useful language on the bottom of page 19. If possible, I would like to, or could you please suggest okay, speaking very nicely. Finally, we're in Unit 4. We're getting close to the end of this recording. We're going to have a short recording tonight. In Unit 4, there's a lot of talk about Carly Fiorina. Well, you know what? I don't really care about her. Um, she was kind of important at one time, but we're just using her as a model to practice some language. First of all, I gave you an assignment of, tell me, eight... jobs in the C-suite. C-level officers, chief executive officer, chief finance officer, chief marketing officer, chief production officer, chief publicity mark officer, whatever. Okay. But basically this reading was an opportunity for us to think about uh, a career. And at the bottom of page 20, I've got a star on my page. Bottom of page 20. And, and ask questions like, what do you do? How long have you been in this position? Where did you work before this? And so page 21 has this kind of a dialogue at a meeting where somebody is introducing herself, happy to meet you, and she describes her career very briefly in a question and answer. We could do that very easily on our test. Also, page 21 was the point where I discussed R&D, and I spent some time on that. And so you should be ready to talk about three forms of R&D. Basic research, what does it mean? Applied research, what does it mean? And development, what does it mean? Can you give me an example? Well, I gave you one example of the post-it note, but you've got to be able to explain how that works. But there's lots of other examples of things that got developed. Uh, you know, those no-stick fry pans. The original one was Teflon. Why? And uh, they invented this kind of stuff and nobody really worked with it and then NASA wanted to send spaceships up to to, uh, to space, right? And then return to Earth. Well, it gets so hot coming through the atmosphere. They found some materials that talked about, they found some, some articles, some scholarship that talked about these materials that reduced friction. Friction, F-R-I-C-T-I-O-N. Um, and friction is what makes heat rubbing together your hands, that's friction, and if you rub them and you rub them and you rub them and your hand starts getting warm, that's the friction. So they took those studies and they worked on it and developed it into a no-stick coating that they put on the on the rockets to come back to Earth. And then that was basic research, applied research, and then the development of that research was to, hey, let's put it on a fry pan, then we won't need much oil, or even no oil, Nowadays, no oil. And we can fry our egg and it doesn't stick. So that would be another kind of example. Page 22, looking backwards. And you had an assignment when you turn 60, looking backwards. So in your test, I could ask you, oh, now you're 60 years old. Tell me about your life. I want to hear lots of PPs. Present perfect. I've been doing. Past perfect. 
Until I was 25, I had only been a student. Until I was 25, I had only been a student. But I graduated from and I graduated from university when I was 27. But when I was 25, I took a year off from school to have a job as a construction worker because I needed money. And that's when I truly discovered how hard my father had been working all his life. That's when I discovered that university really was an easy life. So that would be your past, per past perfect is up until a certain point I had done. And, and there can be some present continuous. And now that I'm 60, I am blah, blah, blah. And you could use simple past. I was only a student for so many years can use it, but I especially like to hear your perfect tenses. And then that takes us, because we didn't touch page 23, although we did mention the purple fox at the bottom of page 23, but this is green politely. We're going to do page 23 on Thursday. It's a speaking exercise. And then page 24 is uh, fast tracking employees, and that's what I just mentioned at the beginning of this lecture. Uh, you should be ready to talk about that. Don't worry about the statistics from the reading. It's the idea. Do you agree with fast tracking? Yes, no, why? Me, I will tell you that I am a, a fan of fast tracking, but I will listen to any argument that is against fast tracking because I don't think it's the only way for every organization and every person. Fast tracking probably has some problems. One of them might be that it makes competition between people who should be working together. That's a possible argument. All right. So, um, I think I have covered everything that I wanted to talk about. Let's go back to... That's not it. I'm going to shrink me. I think we've done everything here. <sighs> Looks like it. So, uh, Thursday morning, 10.30, Zoom. We will do the one page that I mentioned, bang. Page 17 is the one that I, I, I failed to mention. We will do uh, on Thursday. And under any questions, and I think that's it. All right. I wish you good luck, good studying, and I will see you on Thursday. Thank you much.